Today, we're going to be doing lesson one three, but I kind of go off on my own. So this is um, pre-calc 1.3. And this is about transformations. So with your big sheet of paper, shut that off, whoever has that. Transformations. So you're going to draw on that blank sheet of paper one big graph. And the first graph that I'm going to draw is this graph. What graph is this? Absolute value graph. I'm going to write the equation next to it. By the way, notice how I'm using colors. Second graph. I'm going to start putting up a bunch of graphs, and I want you to notice what's going on. Here we go. Shh. This is the equation for this graph. Y equals the absolute value of X minus 2. Don't talk, just write. dark blue one is y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. In the gray, y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. Next one. This one is y equals the absolute value of x minus four. Next one in purple. This one 
is y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. Okay, take a look at this next one. This one is y equals one half absolute value of x. Problem one. I'm running out of room for it, so I'm going to write the equation down on the lower right hand side here. Is y equals 2 times the absolute value of x? That's the I'm going to make sure I do this one in a really difficult color to see so I get a lot of complaints. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is mauve. Oh, this mauve colored one, I'm going to write off to the left, even though I drew it on the right, will be y equals negative absolute value x minus 4 absolute value minus 1. On the other side, there are some basic functions. So, for example, y equals 3. Looks like this. This is called a constant function. Call a constant function because the slope never changed, or the slope is always zero. Second one, y equals x. Looks like this. This is called the identity function. Because whatever you put in is what you get out. So if you put in a 1 for x, out pops a, y, a 1 for y. That's why it's called the identity function. The one that we did together <coughs> was y equals the absolute value of x, which looked like this. So what was the absolute value? Looks like a V. There's also, these are what are called common functions, by the way. There's also Y equals the square root of X. Looks like this. This is the square root function. Looks like half a parabola on its side. There's also one that you must be very familiar with by now. This one is the y equals x squared graph, called a parabola, or sometimes we use the word quadratic. And then the last one I'd like to put up here is this one.
This is the y equals x cubed graph, known as the cubic. And the reason I'm showing you these six graphs are these are the six graphs that in this course we talk about the most. And so one of the things that's really important is on the previous page where we looked at the absolute value and I did a lot of different things to it, those things that I did to that graph apply to all of these graphs. So if you understand how that absolute value graph moved, that's how all of these things move. So what I want you to try to do now is I want you to go back to the previous page where you had all those absolute values. I want you to take the next 12 minutes and I want you to do number one, write down the rules about how those absolute value graphs were moving around. Write down notes. If I see this, this is what the graph does. If I see that, that's what the graph does. And then when you get done, I want you to talk to three other people. And I want you to tell them what you noticed, and then I want you to listen to what they noticed, because maybe they came up with something that you liked the wording better, or vice versa. So 12 minutes, write down some rules about what's going on, and then share those with each other, and see if somebody has rules better than yours, or if you can share your rules with them, and then that way they can have better notes. And these rules that you write down apply to all six of these common graphs.